Hi there, Serial Trader here. I'm going to check into the uh, major US indices here today. So I've left this labeling up from last time. And at this point, I'm still inclined to consider us having an ABC. And I'll still consider it complete here as long as this, this critical low can hold. Um, Friday's price action obviously was uh, quite negative. Um, but, but let's look at the bigger picture here. So nothing's really changed on this daily chart. So I'll just leave that in your memory. Uh, but I'll, I'll make a few remarks. So let's go with the candlestick chart. So um, hang on there. SPX on the candlestick chart. So here, here's what I'm looking at on the candlestick chart. So remember I said last time it'd be quite positive if we were able to you know, trade up and close above the T-line after our bullish engulfing. Well, we did that, and that was good. And then Friday, that just completely reversed. We had a very down day. Didn't close right at the lows of the day, but still quite negative. And we closed uh, firmly below the T-line. And then this this three T-line never actually crossed above the uh, regular T-line, and now appears to be rolling back over. So not very good follow-through on this bullish engulfing pattern. So I'm just as I've written here, this is critical support. I would say the low of this bullish engulfing candlestick, not the actual low here, um, although that's also important, but this low of the bullish engulfing candlestick, if that gets taken out, then it will be it will become a, a failed bullish engulfing candlestick reversal signal, which is actually a sell signal. So when you have a fail, failed buy signal, that is actually a strong sell signal. So normally when you have a bullish engulfing, that implies that the next three to five price bars of whatever time frame you're looking at should be in that direction. So we had one price bar in that direction and then immediately rejected on the second price bar. So that's not very good. To me, unless there's a pretty strong uh, bullish uh, reversal and then follow through starting Monday of this coming week, then the pressure really looks to the downside. At the very minimum, test or uh, take out this low. And then of course, if the uh, February low gets broken, I expect some significant bearish follow through. But there's still, as long as these levels hold, there's still just no reason to think that's going to happen. And overall, with this overall wave structure as discussed in the last video, this has all the makings of a C wave decline, not a third wave decline. It's shallower, it's slower, it just doesn't have the right look, at least thus far. I mean, if it just shot down 200 points, you know, in, in a matter of a, a day or two on the S&P, okay, now we can say, yeah, we got a third wave uh, in progress. But as of right now, that's not what it appears to be happening. And we'll just check in on the Dow here. Same thing with the Dow. Uh, I had the bullish engulfing. Follow through the next day. It was looking great. And then, oh, she tanked on Friday and closed below the T-line. And not too much to discuss about that. Same with the NASDAQ, had a nice bullish engulfing, follow through, close above the T-line the next day, and then below the T-line in a weekday on Friday as well. And then the VIX, let's just check in on VIX. So again, VIX just isn't really spiking up the way you would expect in a really powerful decline. That's why I'm still really leaning towards that being an overall ABC corrective structure on that daily. Uh, but you know, again, you have to change your mind if the market forces you to do so. So if VIX starts spiking up hard and trending strongly and the market starts doing the same to the downside, well, you have to start embracing the, the more bearish scenarios in play. So I'll, I'll just leave it on note for my own personal uh, experience because I am trading uh, you know, for a living. I'm trading the markets regularly. Uh, on a daily or almost daily basis, depending on what I'm doing. So right now, it's difficult doing conventional, like directional swing trades because uh, you know you see a setup, it looks good. Uh, you know everything that your system is built on tells you, okay, let's take this trade, and you take it, and then uh, oftentimes it still gets off to a good start, and you're like, okay, good, good. And you don't want to sell too early because normally when you're trading, uh, selling too early if something's working for you is a poor idea. But in, in these market conditions, it, it's so volatile and uh, you get so many false breakouts and then just big intraday reversals and uh, 
things like that. It, it's better just to be an intraday scalper, you know, looking for small uh, but consistent uh, moves to capture during the day. And there's plenty of those opportunities right now. In fact, more than there normally would be with the uh, massive swings we have intraday. Great opportunities for scalping. And also, uh, you know, being a hedged option trader, like I've revealed in some of the previous videos, having a position that can really benefit in either direction and, and lose very little uh, if it's just totally wrong. Those are the kinds of positions that are going to get you through this kind of period uh, as a profitable trader. But uh, I, I just wouldn't be taking any big, you know, long-term directional moves. Uh, I mean, unless you're really long-term, like you're looking to invest and you want to buy some what you consider you know good quality companies at fair valuations and you plan on holding them for years uh, may not be a terrible time to be doing that but that's not what i do uh, i'm looking to just get money out of the market on a regular basis and, and make a living doing so and, and grow my wealth doing so and have a lot of control while i'm doing it and uh, you just don't have that same control if you're trying to be a long-term holder uh, because what if we go into a bear market and that's entirely possible here and then what are you going to hold through a 50 to 80% decline on the major indices and way more than that on certain individual names, even even big blue chip names? I mean, are you going to hold Apple down to $50 or $80 or whatever whatever it would go to in that situation if, if that happened? Uh, would you feel good about that just because, you know, oh, I'm in it for the long term uh, and, you know, in, in 20 years I'll be looking great. Well, I don't think about 20 years from now. I think about tomorrow, next month, a year from now. So I'll just, I'll leave that with you. Serial Trader signing off.